we are in the middle of a big uh, digital transformation, something that has started um, about 10, 15 years ago, and it's accelerating, it's not uh, slowing down. Um, so we have different technologies. Um, so uh, we have social media, we've seen um, social media becoming, you know, uh, a big um, you know, influencing the work of Ministry of Foreign Affairs quite substantially. This is why we start talking about digital diplomacy simply because of social media, but that was the first stage. Uh, we also have new um, uh, technologies emerging. Artificial intelligence is becoming quite a, a useful instrument. Uh, and um, it's a different type of instrument. It's, uh, it's not only like social media trying to engage with foreign publics, especially for foreign dipl uh, public diplomacy, but artificial intelligence is particularly useful for uh, taking decisions for diplomatic decision making and that is valid uh, for instance in terms of crisis management that is valid also in terms of negotiations so there is a, a quite an interesting area now in which artificial intelligence is permeating it's um, becoming quite um, you know uh, significant in the way in which ministry of foreign affairs operate um, crisis management international negotiation and don't forget about consular affairs you know, processing of all the documentation. Now, many countries use artificial intelligence to do that. I'll draw attention also to the fourth one, which is emerging as a new uh, field, uh, which is about the metaverse, which is virtual diplomacy, uh, virtual environments, and also uh, augmented reality. Uh, we started a little bit because of Zoom, something that we use today, but I think it's it's going in a slightly different direction. We've seen uh, um, uh, the work of 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 uh, of uh, uh, Meta, the company Meta, but not only Meta, Microsoft, and a few others, um, and that is particularly relevant um, for building the next stage of of digital diplomacy, um, in terms of you know public diplomacy, but also you know uh, virtual embassies. Um, now you have the option to actually do these kind of things, which about ten or fifteen years ago you are not able to do it. So technologies are are important, are evolving constantly, and the one that I think you know have made the bigger, uh, the strongest impact: social media, artificial intelligence, and now virtual reality and the metaverse. There is definitely a point of attraction for Ministry of Foreign Affairs when you ask them why would they want to, to use digital technologies. And part of it, especially when we mentioned the case of social media, was that it's very cost effective. Meaning what? Meaning that you all of a sudden can reach millions of people in real time with, you know, very relatively well uh, low cost. That's not necessarily true for artificial intelligence. For artificial intelligence, you need people with talent, with skills which you need to pay well, because otherwise private companies are going to recruit. And uh, you need infrastructure, you know, to, to you know, operate uh, uh, some of the of the tools. So that's artificial intelligence. I haven't seen uh, that being developed. I've seen, you know, uh, cases like UK and Germany, United States and Finland. But uh, there is a, a, a question about budget there, because you need. With the metaverse, it's interestingly too, because, um, number of countries started to invest in this. Um, I mentioned South Korea, even UAE. UAE started to put aside in about 10 million uh, or 10 billion, uh, um, I, I forgot about that, to develop its national metaverse. That's also very costly. Uh, so I think when you talk about technology, you have to be careful what is appropriate based on the type of objectives that you like to pursue, but also your budget. Um, but I think, you know, it's not necessarily to do everything in one go. It's also important, you know, basically to tailor that to the type of obje objectives that you do. And I think, you know, for uh, smaller countries, um, uh, medium-sized countries, um, uh, Chile and so on, putting themselves on the map is particularly important. So you have also to think about what cost means. It's not only the cost of doing certain things, but also the, the 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 benefits that may come from um, uh, operating in a digital uh, in a digital menu. So these benefits could be, for instance, national branding. Um, a country, Chile, has done extremely well in terms of branding. It's one of the most uh, you know stable democracies in in South America. 
uh, its products are you know well perceived brand uh, uh, marca chile as a as a as a brand uh, it's it's well recognized so from this point of view i think it's 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 done tremendous work so um on the other hand in terms of of the digital profile of of chile that i think is still um something that uh, probably needs to be improved um uh, and i think you know it it builds on the on on the, what it has accomplished but i think you know in terms of becoming this kind of startup nation um uh, uh which i think it is but uh, it is not yet recognized outside startup nations israel for instance uh, but also taiwan but also uh, finland um they develop digital products they develop digital services so in addition to the goods and uh, that you already chile as a country has produced you have now an option to develop expertise and digital service that can be uh, exported uh, uh, and, and regionally, but also internationally. So when you think about cost, you have also to think about benefits and to put that um, into perspective. So what you want to accomplish based on the experience that you have already had and how much you can get out of it. 